Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process. Crisis is like a coin with two sides. One represents problem while other represents opportunity. Always we are uh, get bogged down whenever we face the crisis, but crisis is a part and parcel of human life. And uh, with this thought process, let us start this lecture and uh, let us recall what we learnt in the last lecture. We basically looked at the carbon burning rate in the process uh, we have uh, derived a relationship for how does the diameter of a carbon particle will vary with respect to time. If you look at the relationship what we had derived is basically d square t is equal to d naught square minus k c t and uh, d naught is the initial diameter of carbon particle. And K c uh, is a constant, we had uh, derived that K c is basically 8 rho g d 1 2 by rho c ln b c plus 1. So, keep in mind that rho g is the density of the gas, rho c is the density of carbon and d 1 2 is the diffusivity between the uh, carbon and the oxygen. And B c is your mass transfer number, sometimes people call it as a uh, Spalding number. And uh, let us look at how does this d square vary with the time and keep in mind that uh, this d square, this relationship is known as d square law for carbon uh, sphere and this is also similar for the any liquid droplet sphere. If you recall that we had derived similar relationship earlier, only that K c will be different, but the form is similar. And when we plot this d square versus time, you will see that this is your initial droplet diameter square right this is the this one and uh, as the time progress it uh, reduces of course linearly and the slope from this relationship d square law it will be coming as 8 rho g d 1 2 divided by rho. So, ln b c plus 1 and uh, keep in mind that when the droplet uh, diameter becomes 0, right. And the time duration for complete combustion of carbon sphere is known as T v, that is carbon sphere lifetime, because this is the time required to uh, for burning complete burning of carbon sphere. And this uh, can be different depending on the uh, various properties like rho z, b c and other things and this will be we know that b c is basically f, we know that uh, b c is equal to f into y o basically it is oxidizer. And uh, the mass fraction of oxidizer can be 
1 if it is oxygen atmosphere, if it is air it will be 0 0.232 and if it is varying then it will be different, F is your basically fuel and uh, oxidizer ratio. So, uh, note that this d square law will be valid not only for carbon sphere, but it will be valid for other um, fuel particle or and metal particles. So, therefore, uh, only thing is that properties will be changing and uh, so also the uh, other uh, parameters like diffusivity and uh, but however, the law will remain same and let us look at some data which uh, I have uh, considered in this table. If you look at the aluminum is of course, the density is given here gram per centimeter cube and T V uh, it is in the calculated and uh, this is oxygen uh, uh, atmosphere and if you look at this is point 0 0.9 and uh, because the B oxygen is Z different values and if you look at uh, air it is 0 0.26 and it takes more time whenever the air uh, atmosphere is there like. And if uh, only oxygen will be there that time required for the complete uh, burning of the aluminum sphere is reduced. And uh, boron of course, uh, it is little higher even for oxygen 1.57 10 power to minus 5 second this unit is in second. And uh, if the atmosphere is air or surrounding is air then uh, the time is basically 6.15 10 power to minus 5 second. And uh, if you look at the measure value is much lower 2.03 10 power to minus 5 for air atmosphere this is your measured value right. Question arises why it is so. And, uh, Similarly, if you look at your carbon, carbon it takes uh, also uh, you know calculated is higher values 2.28, 1.98 when you measure that means, you conduct experiment and measure uh, the uh, life time of the carbon sphere, then it is uh, much lower than the calculated value. And that is true also with magnesium and uh, of course, the experimental data is available for zirconium uh, uh, if you look at uh, no experimental data is available. But however, the calculated uh, lifetime of zirconium particle is higher for air atmosphere as compared to oxygen. And that is true for all the cases uh, I, as I have already explained that this B C will be different for uh, for air y 0 infinity is 0 0.232 whereas, for oxygen atmosphere y o infinity is 1. So, therefore, B C for oxygen is always greater than B C of air. Therefore, even the uh, of course, the other properties like rho G will be different uh, and rho C is different, diffusivity will be different. Therefore, always of course, uh, the T B uh, for oxygen atmosphere is lower than as compared to the air. Uh, because vigorous reaction will be taking place there is no diluents and uh, therefore, it is higher. And beside this uh, if you look at the measured values is basically smaller as compared to the calculated values 
right these values any one of them if you take consider any one of them then you will find this uh, measured lifetime burning of carbon in this uh, particular is lower as compared to calculate value. Why it is so? Because in our analysis we have considered the constant thermodynamic properties for example, density, diffusivity, but in real situation it is not the case. So, therefore, why? Because the these properties will be varying with respect to temperature and uh, as the like it is calculated uh, the temperature will be varying we will see little later on uh, that temperature does vary from the um, fuel surface to the infinity. So, therefore, that will be affecting the properties therefore, the measured values is always lower than the calculated values. And of course, we have done a lot of other assumption like there is no radiation and this is a one dimensional in nature and several other things that will be also contributing for lower values of measured lifetime uh, of the any fuel sphere. So, uh, now if you look at the solid fuel burning, if you consider the carbon here and uh, this is of course, the lifetime burning of this and this is the initial diameter. You can say this is in mm, Tv in second. You will find that carbon is having basically uh, on the upper uh, portion and this is your kerosene and this D naught is basically initial uh, fuel sphere diameter. Now, if you look at uh, this curve, you can see that for a particular uh, initial uh, fuel sphere of both carbon and uh, the kerosene, if we will compare that this is having higher values T v. That means, more time is required for carbon same initial diameter of carbon burning. Uh, as compared to the same initial kerosene droplet, uh, droplet. Why it is so? That is the question might be coming to your mind. Uh, if you compare the carbon, this is your carbon and uh, the oxygen will be coming from the atmosphere. Of course, the gas will be going out here and then uh, the oxygen molecule has to reach this surface and then the there will be some uh, reaction will be occurring at the surface of the of fuel right. And so, oxygen has to travel a larger distance as compared to a liquid droplet and let us say this is your kerosene droplets. Now, what will happen? The vaporization will be taking place of the kerosene, kerosene will be traveling and then so also oxygen will be traveling from other places around the and then at uh, some surface will be formed and this is known as flame and here the kerosene or the uh, fuel like you can say fuel, fuel will be traveling and oxygen will be traveling here. So, therefore, in this kerosene droplet the oxygen has to travel a shorter distance as compared to the carbon sphere. Therefore, uh, the burning will be faster and the time required for a uh, kerosene droplet of same size will take less time as compared to the same size carbon sphere. And uh, that is the reason why uh, it takes less time. And if you look at the coal which is a pyrolyzing combustion, if you look at let us say this is the coal. And uh, then what will happen? This is your coal particles right and uh, to start with and this will be 
char that means this all these gases are released from uh, due to the devolatilization devolatilize volatilize gases are released and then the flame will be formed because the oxygen this is your flame oxygen will be uh, coming from atmosphere and then the flame is formed. So, therefore, uh, if you look at if uh, for the coal this curve will be between somewhere in between like this is your corresponding to the coal particle because the coal particle combustion will be similar to the kerosene because the uh, the volatilized or the pyrolyzed gas from the coal will be going away from the carbon surface to meet the oxygen to have a gas phase flame. This is a gas gaseous flame gaseous flame or gas phase flame, but if the devolatilization rate is more then what will happen this curve will be uh, coming towards the toward the kerosene. This is for higher uh, volatilize coal particle coal sphere. In other words more gases will be going so that what will happen the uh, the flame stand of distance I can call this distance R f R f basically flame stand of distance. If the rate of volatilization of the coal particle is higher then the flame stand of distance will be higher as a result the oxygen has to um, move lesser distance to meet the uh, flame have a combustion is lower down. So, therefore, the time required for complete combustion of the um, coal particle will be closer will be reduced and it may closer to the kerosene or any other uh, liquid fuel combustion. So, uh, therefore, uh, that is the things what uh, I would like to say that uh, we can really find out from that why we need to find out the lifetime of a solid fuel particle or the sphere because of fact that when we are designing a combustors of course, uh, the various kinds of particle size will be there, but we can take a representative particle size and then find out the uh, lifetime of a uh, solid sphere such that the length of the combustors can be uh, determined. In other words, you will have to give enough length of the uh, combustor such that uh, the all the fuel particle will be burnt it out before it being exhausted out of the combustor. So, that is the reason why this lifetime is uh, uh, estimation of a carbon particle or coal particle or any other uh, fuel particle is essential. So, uh, by this we can also use that and design it. Now, uh, we will be discussing about basically temperature uh, profile and uh, if you look at we are considered in the carbon keep in mind that this is a non pyrolyzing uh, fuel particle and uh, for this purposes uh, what we will do we will have to basically consider the energy equation uh, and uh, keep in mind that uh, this is the oxygen will be coming from this side this is also oxygen will be coming and I have already explained uh, okay. 
and uh, to find out the temperature profile, how does the temperature vary with respect to radial direction from the surface, this is your fuel surface, from the fuel surface. So, we will have to invoke the energy equation that which we had already derived, uh, that is energy equation energy conservation that is uh, basically if you look at mass flux rate at the surface I can write down that square r square C p d t by d r this is your convection term is equal to k g d by d d r r square d t by d r. Now, <coughs> we will have to integrate this equation, right. If we will integrate, if I say this is equation 1, by integrating equation 1, we can have r square and this is a constant mass flow rate, right. So, C p is also constant, I can take it out and then that will be T is equal to k g is also constant, I can get this r square d T by d r plus constant, let us say this is equation 2. And uh, what we will do? We will have to basically apply the boundary condition at the surface such that you know we can evaluate the constant C. So, at fuel surface what is happening? If you look at at the fuel surface this is your fuel surface. So, when the oxygen will come and meet this carbon will be reacting with the uh, oxidizes as a result some of the heat will be released, right. So, the amount of heat release if you look at what it will be, this will be at the surface m dot at um, s, m dot s into delta s c, delta s c is the of combustion of, of carbon you can consider and that will be equal to the amount of heat convected out, this is the gas which is convected out. So, that will be equal to the mass flux, whatever it is coming out and this is with the C p and with certain temperature T and minus there will be conduction due to conduction, this is the convection and then there will be conduction k g d t by d r and this is the condition at the fuel surface, this is your fuel surface right consider any surface. Now, we will be using now at uh, r the equation 2 becomes basically m dot s r square C p t is equal to k g uh, k g r square d t by d r right uh, is equal to basically plus c. Now, if you look at this is nothing but your c becomes I can write down here that m s there's c p t minus k g d t by d r, I can take r square is nothing but your this much, you can say this is your 3 right, the equation 3, this is equation 3. So, that is nothing but m dot s delta s c 
r square right so is equal to what is c now then we will put this c the equation 2 substituting uh, the values of c in equation 2 we can have basically r square c p t is equal to k g r square d t y d r plus m dot s delta s c r square. So, uh, this is the thing what we got it and let us say this is your equation 4. And we will now basically integrate this equation that we will do in the next lecture and uh, see that what we are getting out of it. Thank you very much and we will again look at this aspect in the next lecture.